Well, I am excited to be here tonight. To Rob, before you get started, we, we must review one last thing. Because I'm standing by my friend here. Yes. Is, can anybody tell me who this is? Priso! Priso! Hey, Priso. Alright, sorry. We just we, we clarified that last week, and, and I want to make sure you I understand. Alright, back to Rob. Okay, as Dave said, uh, my name is Rob. I'm uh, John and Ellen's father. So I'm going to do my best to not embarrass them. Aww. But I have to warn you in advance that what I'm about to go through is going to seem like an information bomb. I am going to drop this in your lap. You're going to say, what just happened? It's going to be like we're auctioning off Bible verses. I'm going to say, hey, who, 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 who wants it? Here we go, here we go, here we go. So there's going to be a lot of that. I'm going to be shooting a lot of information at you in a hurry. So let me begin with a question. Who's ever heard the saying... If I knew then what I know now. There's a few people. Okay, good, good, good. What do you think this means? What does that mean? That if you knew the information you know now, you would have wished you knew it back then because maybe that will help you throughout life. That's exactly right. And do you hear a tone of regret with that statement? If I knew then what I know now, boy, things would be different. Boy, I wish I wouldn't have done that. I've made a mistake. Oh, if I could go back and undo it, that's exactly what I would do. Let me rephrase that. Let's turn that around and say, I need to know now what I'm going to need to know then. Do you see how that would, might help you in your decision-making process? What do I need to know now that I need to know then? And that is a great question to ask. Okay. So what is it that we need to know now that could help us in the future? What do we want in life? What are we living for? Who are we living for? I'll share a story. There was a man that in his younger days, in the first half of his life, he experienced more than most people would ever experience or know in their entire lives. He became um, a great leader. He was a father who loved the Lord. He became great among men. He commanded armies. He knew victory after victory. He became king. He also knew what it was like to turn away from the Lord, to want to hide in fear. And even though he repent, repented, he lost a son as the consequence of his sin. This would be a time that he would never forget. And he gained an understanding that he eventually shared with his next son, who then passed this on to his children. Proverbs 4, 1 through 7, Hear, O son, a father's instruction, and be, in, be attentive, that you may gain insight, for I give you good precepts. Do not forsake my teaching. When I was a son with my father, tender, the only one in the sight of my mother, he taught me and said to me, Let your heart hold fast my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom. Get insight. Do not forget. And do not turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her and she will guard you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom and whatever you get, get insight. What does the Bible say about wisdom? Psalms 111.10 The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and all those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we do pray for a, a, a spirit of wisdom. We pray that you would move in our lives, Lord, that you would help us to guard our hearts, that we would keep our hearts with all vigilance, for from it flows the wellspring of life. Lord. Would you give us new hearts, hearts that are softened to hear your words, and useful to you. Help us, Father, to be wise and to not harden our hearts, but to incline our ears to your words, that we might be able to take into our hearts your desires. Give us the passion to do that, Father, that we might follow you and honor you with our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. In my life, I'm learning that I need to grow in wisdom. Proverbs 10.1, a wise man makes a glad father, 
I want to make my Heavenly Father glad. I want to make wise decisions that not only help me in this life, but in the life to come. How do we do this? You know, thankfully, we're not left to figure this out on our own. We have the Bible, we have the Spirit, we have the Father's plan for us. So let's look at Proverbs. Okay, the book of Proverbs includes the work of various authors, but much of it is attributed to King Solomon. Solomon, do we, do we know who Solomon is? Solomon is the wisest man to have ever lived. Um, in fact, God said to Solomon, you know what, ask me whatever you want and I'll give it to you. And Solomon, you know what he asked for? He asked for wisdom. And this pleased God so much that not only did he grant that Solomon would have this wisdom, but he also made it, he allowed him to have great wealth and great power and, and might and uh, unimaginable wealth. He had ships bringing him gold. Just, uh, it took him, I think it was like seven years longer to build his own house than he spent building the temple, which took 17 years or something like that. I might be wrong on the numbers, but the point is this guy had great wealth. He had everything he could imagine. Uh, he, he says, uh, I allowed my heart no... Oh, I can't, I can't, I'm going off the cuff. I shouldn't do that. Let me, I'll, I'll be wise. let stick to my notes. <laughs> okay. So, Proverbs. It dates between the 10th and the 6th centuries B.C. So this is old wisdom that is true today as it ever was. Uh, it, this, the book of Proverbs is intensely practical. It is altogether useful in examining our own lives and determining whether or not we are wise or foolish. There are sections of Proverbs that stand alone as units of thought, but Proverbs are a are Collected sayings that can be grouped or that can be put into thematic groupings. So, if you're a one person that likes to write in the margin of your Bible, as you're reading through Proverbs, what you could do is you could read a Proverbs and realize, oh, they're talking about money here. I might put a little dollar sign right there. So, whenever I see something in Proverbs about money, I can go back to that and say, oh, that verse is about money. Or maybe a W for wisdom. This verse is about wisdom or a heart for one that's about the heart. And what happens is you start to realize, oh, here's all sorts of proverbs on the heart. Here's all sorts of proverbs on wisdom. In fact, uh, wisdom is one of the overarching themes of the entire Bible. Uh, it's meant for all people, but particularly for young people. That's you. The purpose of the book of Proverbs can be found in Proverbs 1, to know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight in righteousness, justice, and equity, to give guidance to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth. The pattern of Proverbs, the pattern that Proverbs uses to teach is through comparing, contrasting, I'll use a big word here, juxtaposing. Has anybody ever heard that? But what we're saying is we're comparing, okay? We're going to compare... This is what wisdom looks like. This is what folly looks like. The opposite of wisdom is folly. And we'll, we'll highlight folly so that we highlight wisdom. We'll show what not to do, what to do. So it's very, very practical that way. And, there's, and I'm going to give you what we're going to be going over is Basically, and I'll go quick, and like I said, this is an information bomb. We're going to go over 12 steps, 12 ideas, 12 things that you can look at in your own life and ask, am I wise in this area or am I a fool in this area? It's just, and so we'll get right into it. Uh, okay. We can examine... And we want to be careful to not sin when we do this. But we can look at other people's lives and we can say, 
boy, that person did something foolish in their life. Fred, have you ever done something foolish in your life? <laughs> All the time. You know. So if Fred was to share with me something foolish that he's done in his life that I haven't done yet, I might be able to say, hmm, that sounds foolish. I don't want to do that. So we can examine lives, we can look at other people, but we don't want to look and cast judgment and be doing things in a sinful way, but rather that we can examine from uh, other people's lives, both the wise and foolish, and learn from them. Um, there are some myths about wisdom that, need to be, that we need to address here. The first is, age does not equal wisdom. How many people look at... How many of you look at Fred and say, oh, he's got to be wise? <laughs> Fred, did you wake up this morning and you said in the mirror, oh, there's a wise person? I did not. <laughs> okay. There's a certain amount of self-knowledge in that. I'm, I'm picking on Fred tonight because I know that, because it, it's fun to dish it out anyway. And you won't say it. <laughs> you got to come back when you just tied us. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Okay, so age doesn't equal wisdom. You can be old and foolish, and I can attest to that myself. Being smart does not mean that you are wise, and a high degree of education does not mean that you are wise. Now, it's good to pursue an education. It's good to learn throughout the course of our lives, but without wisdom, they will be of little value to us as Christians. The whole point of wisdom is this. The whole point of wisdom is this. To live a life with God, that glorifies God, that honors God, that is put together in an orderly way as God would intend. Okay. Our goal tonight is to be able to compare wisdom and folly. To be able to... Um, hey, just pause. That last thought is, is in opposition to our culture. Absolutely. Wisdom is is greed based. Go to school, get really smart, so you can get a good job, so you can have a lot of money. It, and and your portrayal of seeking understanding was based at a at a different type of pursuit. Sure, sure. And could you just just say that one more time? So because sometimes it, we hear the other one so much that the proverbs. You know what what you just said is is directly from the proverbs, but but said. I think almost clearly. So, would you say one more time? The whole point of wisdom is to live a life with God that glorifies God, that honors God, that is put together in an orderly way as God would intend. When we do something other than that... What a that, better reason. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. What a better reason to pursue an A. Right, what we, a better reason to pursue an A, guys. In fact, we are going teacher. to be talking about some of okay. these specific right. things. Thanks. That's very, very, very good. <laughs> I don't do that to anybody. Sorry, Rob. Go on. So again, we're, we're going to look at 12 categories that help us examine if we have wisdom or folly in these areas of our life. And our goal is to repent when we see folly and to pursue wisdom. Okay, so the first is... Uh, okay, I'm going to... I've, I've got... I'm going to ask a question here. I'm, my kids can't answer it. <laughs> How long does an adult lion in the wild sleep in any one day? <laughs> That's a great guess. That's a long time. Anybody else? Real quick. 16. That is another great guess, but you're wrong. <laughs> it's 20 hours. 20 hours! An adult, like an adult male lion just laying around, as long as they're healthy and good, they're out. They check out. But when they wake up, watch out. Does anybody know how long an elephant sleeps? Four hours. Three. Very, very, very good answers. The correct answer is, in the daytime, four hours, and in the nighttime, another four hours. And what they do is they sleep They'll take like a half an hour nap, they'll get up and eat something, and then they'll walk around, and then they'll take another half hour nap until they have four hours of sleep in the day. And they'll do the same thing at night, so eight hours. Really, really interesting. Okay. 
<laughs> so, you want to be a lion. Who wants to sleep like a lion? <laughs> That's great. I would love to be able to sleep like a lion, except I have this one problem. In Proverbs, it says, and we ask, what are my sleep habits? What do my sleep habits have to do with wisdom? I don't know. Let's see what Proverbs says. Proverbs 6, 6 through 11. Go to the ant, O sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Without having any chief or officer or ruler, she prepares her bread in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. How long will you lie there, O oh, sluggard? What's a sluggard? What's a slug? Whoa, slug is, uh, all right, there you go. Proverbs calls us a sluggard, but I just wanted to sleep like a lion. <laughs> Doesn't that sound good? When will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty, poverty will come up upon you like a robber and want like an armed man. What's being said here is that foolish people are prone to sleep too much. It's okay to rest, but the pattern of the fool is to say that my primary goal is just to sit down, just to lay down. I want to sleep just as much as I can. And the result is that much of the day is not spent being productive, and the time is wasted. And what we end up doing a lot of times, it's not that we're not getting enough sleep, it's just that we have horrible sleep patterns. We stay up late, late, late at night, and it forces us to sleep, have to sleep in in the morning to get the sleep that we need. And the next thing you know, oh, it's noontime. Has anybody ever done that? I've done that. I have wasted a lot of time. I've wasted a lot of days. And I, I can't go back and undo it. And I don't want to be that sluggard anymore. Okay, so am I continuing to learn new things? Let me ask, how long does an elephant sleep? Yeah. Oh, you're all wise. Very good. You're learning new things. <laughs> Proverbs 1 through 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fools are not ambitious. They're not ambitious about learning. Wise people are. Fools don't want to learn. You can give a fool a book and they won't read it. They have a problem and they meet a person who is wise in that area and they don't ask any questions. An example would be someone who's struggling in a class at school and they're with someone who can help them, but instead of asking questions about the subject they need help with, they start talking about the bear's defensive line. <laughs> this may not be a sin. Does that sound like a sin to talk no. about the bear's line? No, but it's not wise. It's not wise. Those who are wise have a hunger for learning. They ask questions, they read, they listen. They have an attitude and approach of learning. Uh, do I receive counsel from others? Proverbs 12, 15. The way of the fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. A fool just does what he thinks is a good idea. If you want to be a fool, just do what you think is best. <laughs> right? Right? You want to be a fool, just do what you think is best. Someone who is wise seeks counsel. They are looking for people to speak into their life. Foolish people don't seek counsel. Wise people are always seeking counsel. Do I have discernment? Proverbs 14, 15, The simple believes everything, but the prudent gives thought to his steps. The simpleton. The simpleton believes everything they hear. Be careful to not be the person who believes everything they are told. It, it is good to listen and to consider. And you can think about things, but don't go through life without having discernment. Um, what you will find later on, you, as, you know, as, as you start getting your jobs and furthering um, your education, you're going to start seeing more and more opportunities to be foolish and where in the, today's marketing and commercials and um, the way things are pushed at you, you'll be, there's going, you're going to learn that there's people out there that want to take advantage of you and they will make big promises. They'll tell you, oh, you can work at home making all of this money and never even have to get out of your pajamas and things like that. And then the reality is life doesn't work like that. Yes? You're a fool to believe that. 
You're a fool if you believe that. That's right. And you have to understand, all the things that you guys are about to do foolish in your life, I've probably already done. Let's think about that. <laughs> you were doing research. No, I was doing research. I was finding out, what does a fool do? Oh, well, now I know. <laughs> so, do I choose wise friends? In some ways, whether you are wise or foolish is contingent on the friends you choose. Proverbs 13, 20, whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. If you choose wise friends, you will grow in wisdom. These are people you will talk with, learn with, and pray with. If you are going to hang out with fools, pretty soon you will start saying foolish things, doing foolish things, acting in a foolish way. Consider who are your friends. In large part, the pack that you run with will tell you if you're foolish or wise. This includes dating relationships. Even if the person you might be interested in is a Christian, you need to ask, are they wise? If they are a fool, you will begin to experience the results of pursuing a fool. You ask them to read a book, they don't read it. You ask them to follow through on a task, they don't follow through. You ask them to talk to this person, and they don't talk to them. If this is the pattern, then do you know what you need? New friends. If, if they have determined to be foolish, then you need to determine to be wise. I'll, I'll say that again. If your friends have determined to be foolish, then you need to determine to be wise. How do I know if my friends are wise? It's a good question. Proverbs 9, 8. Do not reprove a scoffer or he will hate you. Repro reprove a wise man and he will love you. In Proverbs 15, 12. A scoffer does not like to be reproved. He will not go to the wise. So the question we ask, we know someone's right, wise by how they receive a rebuke. You can determine a lot about whether or not someone is foolish or wise by how they receive a rebuke. People can seem great as long as you're telling them how great they are. But as soon as you tell them that maybe they are doing something that's not a good idea, or they may have handled a situation wrong, that they might need to examine their attitude, the Bible says that a wise person will receive a rebuke and will say, you care enough about me to confront me on this issue, and they will be willing to change. A fool gets defensive. A fool argues. A fool defends themselves. A fool changes the subject. A fool blames somebody else. Some people have relationships where there's an unwritten rule that says, I won't talk about the junk in your life, and you won't talk about the junk in my life. And really, this is not a biblical relationship. A biblical friendship is one that understands that occasionally I am going to, in love, rebuke you. And you, occasionally, in love, will rebuke me. Um, a really good friend is one, that who, is one that will rebuke you. And your best friends will be the ones that can receive a rebuke well. Am I cautious? This is an interesting one. I remember, I won't say names, I did see a young man... Rather than take the steps down, he just jumped over the railing out here, down to the floor. And I'm pretty sure he did that a few times. Now, is that a sin? No, you're not your own. It's certainly unwise. You could break your leg. You could land on somebody else stepping out. You could hurt somebody else. It was completely thoughtless. Um, it puts a lot of people at risk, and it's unwise. Don't let me catch any of you trying to do that same stunt, okay? Because you'll see me come unglued. All right. After I saw it, I came unglued. <laughs> okay, am I cautious? Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 14, 16, the one who... One who is wise is cautious and turns away from evil, but a fool is reckless and careless. A fool is impetuous, quick to make decisions. They are reckless and they take way too many risks. 
I heard a story of a man that rides a motorcycle to work even on icy roads in the winter. He's crashed more than once, but he continues to ride. It's not a <coughs> sin to own a motorbike. It isn't. But riding a motorcycle on the ice is not wise. <laughs> he, the same guy, he's trying to make money quick by flipping houses. And the housing market collapsed out from under him. He lost everything. So then what does he do? He starts gambling. He's, he goes into gambling. He's got a family. His wife takes a bus to work because he lost the car that she was driving to his gambling. You know, his whole life is a series of reckless gambles. Fools take all kinds of unnecessary risk. Another one, there's a girl. She meets a man on the internet. She's never met him face to face before. She arranges a meeting with this guy by herself in a parking lot. That is not wise. That's careless. That's reckless. That's what a fool does. Don't be this person. Do I show humility? When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with the humble is wisdom. Fools are proud. Wise people pursue humility by the grace of God. Wise people are teachable. They want to learn. They want to grow in wisdom. Proud people think they know everything. They can't be taught. They won't submit to authority because they think they should be in authority. Jesus was the most humble person who ever lived. He was. <clears throat> Philippians 2, 5 through 11, he humbled himself and served us humbly. So humility is a good thing. You know, I'm just going to take a step to the side. The world today does not say humility is a good thing. The world today says what's in you is what makes you wise, what makes you strong. Your character is everything. Your And really the Bible says it, it is humility. Humility uh, taught to us and modeled for us by Jesus. Humility is a good thing and it helps us to be wise. We start to ask questions, you know. But what do I need to know here? A humble person will ask questions like that. Am I willing to make changes? Some people are fools because they don't like to change. Proverbs 22, 3, the prudent sees danger and hides himself, but the simple go on and suffer for it. There are people who experience great difficulty in life because they refuse to change, and I've seen this again and again. There's people that are dear to me that they suffer because they refuse to change. They refuse to acknowledge danger. They know what they're doing is harmful, but they continue and suffer for it. They don't, ex they don't accept a warning. They see danger and don't care. They will allow things to happen as they are unwilling to make changes to avoid them. The prudent sees danger and hides himself. The simple go on and suffer for it. If we are foolish, we will suffer for it. And our families will get to suffer our foolishness with us. Has anybody ever seen somebody or known Someone is doing something dangerous. So we know what I'm talking about. Fools go on and suffer for it. Do I demonstrate self-control? Proverbs 29, 11. A fool gives full vent to his spirit, but a wise man quietly holds it back. You can have a plan. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I have to take a step back. I missed a whole one. <laughs> I'm moving now. Like I said, I've got stuff going on. Okay, do I make wise plans? That's what I, I, I'm sorry. Do I make wise plans? Uh, some people are planners. They make plans for everything, while some people say that I'm just led by the Spirit. I've heard people say that here. You know, I'm in our own church. Oh, I'm just led by the Spirit. Whatever happens. And there is a truth to that. Uh, 
While some people say I'm led by the Spirit, the Spirit would lead you with the gift of administration to make a plan. Proverbs 20:18. plans are established by counsel, by wise guidance, wage war. Have you ever heard that this life is like a war? Have you ever heard that? You know, we put on the full armor of God. Why do we do that? Oh, because we're at war, aren't we? Not against the people, but against the principalities. Okay, and that's another, that's another topic. So, by wise guidance, wage war. Proverbs 24, 5 through 6. A wise man is full of strength, and a man of knowledge enhances his might. For by wise guidance, you can wage your war. And in abundance of counsel, there is victory. Imagine if our nation said, we are going to war, and the public asked, okay, what's the battle plan? And they said, we don't have one. <laughs> we're not sure what country we're bombing. We're not sure what to do with the Army or the Navy or the Air Force. But all the guns are loaded, and we just told them to shoot. <laughs> okay? There's people that live their life like that. <coughs> They're at war, and they don't know what they're doing. Do you have a plan? Is it written down? This is, can include your finances, your savings. It can include your time, your scheduling. If we have a plan, and we need to, we can make adjustments. Without a plan, you don't even know where you're at. You're going to learn that that matters more and more as, as the days come. Do I demonstrate self-control? Proverbs 29, 11. A fool gives full vent to his spirit, but a wise man quietly holds it back. So you can have a plan, but in the moment, if you are impetuous and make emotionally charged bad decisions, you can ruin your whole plan. Let's say you're saving to buy a computer. But instead, you take that money and spend it on movies and video games and junk food. You may even feel good at the time, but later you realize, oh, I don't have my computer money anymore. And you realize the consequences. A wise person quietly holds back. A wise person says, you know, right now I'm going to say no to these things because I have a plan and a goal. That's what a wise person does. I'm learning how to do that. I still struggle with that. I'd like to be more wise. In my walking with wisdom, this is the last one, Proverbs 26, 12, do you see a man who is wise in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for him. That's why I asked, I knew Fred would say, no, I did not say I'm wise. When you wake up in the mirror, we don't wake up and we say, oh, there's someone who's wise. If you ever find yourself saying, you know, my life is so good because of the wise choices I've made, as soon as you start thinking like that, you are in very grave danger. Here we, we, we talked about all the ramifications of being a fool. Who wants to be a fool? Nobody wants to be a fool. And as soon as you start saying, I'm wise and I've done well because of the wise choices I've made, Proverbs says, you're worse than a fool. That's not good. If at any point in the morning you wake up and look in the mirror and say, now here's a wise person, you are about to experience a fall. We should look in the mirror each day and say, today I am capable of being a fool. I could make dumb decisions that I might have to live with for years, maybe the rest of my life. And our prayer should be, Lord God, keep me humble, keep me teachable, keep me repentant, keep me close to Jesus, keep my emotions in check. Let me walk in wisdom today and not be a fool. Be on your guard. Be on your guard against pride that would lead you to think that I have been wise. I have a good life because of my wisdom. We are all capable of folly. It would be wise to not forget it. Um, I'll give you four questions to consider, and you can consider this your devotional. But you can think about this at home. You can think about it tonight. These are good questions to ask. 
What have been the greatest sources of folly in your life? What have been the greatest sources of wisdom in your life? Where are you reaping the fruit of folly in your life right now? Hey, could you like say each question like maybe twice or something? <laughs> sure. I just got the first one down. <laughs> <laughs> so, could you say the first one again to make sure I got it right? Yes. The second one again. What? Action. Thank you for interrupting Dave. <laughs> <laughs> that should be our joke instead of interrupting Cal. I, I re thank you. I appreciate the rebuke. I needed it. <laughs> <laughs> what have been the greatest sources of folly in your life? And the next question. What have been the greatest sources of wisdom in your life? Where are you reaping the fruit of folly in your life right now? Last one, who do you know that you consider wise and why? And don't just say Jesus. <laughs> if I don't know if you guys push books outside, uh, yeah, but sure. I have a book title that this is a book that I haven't finished it, I've almost finished it. But it's very, very good on the topic. A Proverbs Driven Life by Anthony something. I don't know how to say it. Slovakio. I don't know how to say it. Does that work? A Proverbs Driven Life. Very good book. When yeah. you're done with that, give it. And we could pass it around here. A few of us probably would end up reading it. You know, we can give it around. If, if you oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I... <coughs> You'd have to write your name in it, though. That'd be the key thing. Let me finish it, and I'll okay, get it back to you. Yes. Um, I'll leave you with this. Here's what the world says that wisdom is. So wisdom does have a universal application here. It's not just for us as Christians. Um, definition of wisdom the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. The quality of being wise. So even, even the world, in our own dictionary, you know, this is totally outside the Bible. Wisdom transgresses, is that the word? Not, transcends. That's the word I'm looking for. We can all agree that we would rather be wise than foolish. Is it okay if I close in prayer? It'd be fine when you close in prayer. People are going to come out, they're going to play a couple songs, or a song, to close us off. So if you didn't in prayer, those that are going to be playing when he's done, I pray. would be, I would be my, um, let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you for sending your spirit. I thank you, Father, that your desire is that we would, to, we would know you, that we could enjoy you. And we thank you for the wisdom that that offers. We thank you that through wisdom we can see that there's so much more to life than just things on earth here. That in the fullness of time, you have a plan for us. That even at the creation of the world, wisdom was there. We pray, Lord, that the pattern of our life would be one that follows you. That you would move our hearts. And again, Father, we ask that you would give us the passion to follow you. That your desires would be our desires. That our desires would be your desires, Father. That being a Christian isn't about what we don't get to do, but rather being a Christian is about what we get to do. We get to love you, Father. We get to learn about you. We get to share you with others. We get to know and have a hope that we couldn't know without you. So we pray, Father, that as we go forward this night, that 
you would grant wisdom, that you would help us to repent when we recognize wisdom and when we recognize folly in our life, and rather that we would pursue wisdom and guidance. We don't want to be unwise. Help us to learn and soften our hearts, Father, that we might know your joy and rest in you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. been wandering up a narrow path. You've given me so many things that I never had. All in all, I know it's you that always pulls me through. And if you reach down deep inside, you see my heart is true. Cause I hate the way I